Right, so now what I'm going to show you is, I would have to say, probably the most challenging of indicators to perceive, but you could say it's very easy to you. In fact, I was probably going to save this for a later program because I didn't know how well it was going to work in an introductory program. However, uh, Fred has said he's willing to share with us what he knows. If you look here, you'll notice that on our sensory aspect ratio, we are very far down into the feeling component. Okay, so you're really not going to see much at all. And as I said earlier that the prostate is like a, f a male thyroid organ. And my description of it is I perceive a hollow frame around men. It is in the body periphery, so I'm asking you to bring your attention, even though Fred is wearing clothes, I'm asking you to bring your attention to just the outline of his body. Okay? Yeah. Well, his shoe choice says it all. <laughs> now, I'm actually going to ask you to begin to perceive off of the body periphery a little bit around him. And I, when I, and I often call it, it's like a, a, a frame without a picture in it. If you could go to a museum and just see frames with no portraits or pictures in them. So I want you to perceive, if you can, and you're not going to see anything. It's not going to be colors. It's not going to be ores. But you have to feel it. And if you look at my illustration. Oh, I see it. So you can see it. So do you feel it as you see it, or what is it that you're seeing? Well, I see the, uh, the diffraction around, of the light around his body. I'm okay, so you actually perceive light. I'm perceiving a, a distortion of the light around his body. Okay. Does anyone, how else, anyone else, how would you describe it? Winnie? Well, I see, um, I guess what I can use, uh, best describe like smoky mm -hmm. around his brain. So you see a smokiness? Um, Okay, I don't either. Okay. Okay. Someone over here? Okay. It's like a darkness around the outline. Around the outline, so you perceive a darkness. And do you, do you see, do you perceive how it actually is kind of hovering above the body? It's not actually on the body, but above the body? Yeah. If Fred were to quickly sit down for a moment, there'd still be this lingering frame here. That makes sense. Yeah. You know the lingering outline of the of the oh, human form. Yeah, I don't get that with you. I see a, an outline around you, but it travels yeah, with you. Right. I see what you're saying with him. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of, it's, it, as he moves, it sort of expands and, and then sort of follows him gently. Okay. So, do you want to tell us what you know about your health history? Yes. Uh, about two years ago, I had a physical. Well, the last, and my prostate was slightly enlarged and my doctor had me come back about um, two three months after that and it was larger and two three months after that it was larger and it was and that was a cause for concern it finally went outside the range of what they called normal and a year ago I had a biopsy done and everything turned out fine it's just an enlarged prostate without any Thing to go along with it to be concerned about at this point and I'm supposed to go back to the doctor again in February to have it checked. Got good okay. moisture. Yeah. So he's got good moisture. So yes, I was going to say now if I met with Fred and he were to tell me what he's just said, I would say of course listen to your physician's instructions. However, based on my model you have very good moisture so it shouldn't really amount to anything. Now, this is going to be a surprise for you. Do you want me to share with you perhaps what you could be doing in your life that could have you restore your prostate to normal. Sure. Okay. So where we talked about the female, the thyroid for the female being a power organ, prostate being the male version of the thyroid is a power organ. If I were to ask you, do you not feel safe in the world? Is the world to you an unsafe place? Dangerous? Does that make sense to you? I would say no. Okay. So you feel safe in the world? I think so. You think so or you no, know no, so? No, really. I, 
because I was I started thinking about it when in in looking at the uh, indicators there after you said it was a urinary um, and and discussing it here um, I feel very safe I mean I'm I was uh, I, I retired from the Navy as a captain okay although it's a bureaucracy and I could feel um, even though I was a success from the outside as a captain there's a level of frustration in bureaucracy where you could still feel helpless okay. because there's only so much you can do in the span of control that you do have so maybe beyond that span of control I had a lot of frustration with the Navy when I got out <laughs> well, well, let me ask you another maybe it's, that's what it's related to well, let me ask you another question I would say that when people go into the military, it's to, to defend the United States of America against attack. And now that's very interesting that you should say that because, <laughs> um, and I, I could feel the emotion because when I'm thinking about that, 9 11, I was on active duty. Okay. And I was, um, I was a director of contracts for Military Sealift Command Pacific. And I, I felt I felt very vulnerable and, okay. and out of control because I felt I felt like um, I felt like I was in a position to defend the country and I felt a sense of failure with that even okay. though I had absolutely nothing to do with it and being on the west coast I felt that and I felt it deeply okay and I and I I felt so vulnerable I mean I can remember I was I was driving to work because it's three hours earlier there and hearing about the first plane and hearing about the second plane and then trying to get on the on the base and being in a and being in a line that was a mile long because everybody was in an alert status and I felt like I got to get out of this line and I just turned my car around and left because I felt like I was a, a sitting duck there in line if anyone were to choose to do anything. And I went to I went to another office the, um, somewhere else where I used to work, and I called in to work and said, hey, "I'm not even going to try and get on the base." But that was what I felt. It was the vulnerability that I didn't want to sit in line and make myself a target. Okay. And and the richness of what you've just shared tells me that there's a power with that that could motivate some activity in your prostate. I'm not saying you're still there. But I'm saying there may be some more to reveal about vulnerability and safety for you in the world. And to, and to keep following that trail to see what that might reveal. No, that's a very good point because I, I felt I could feel that. When you said it, I could feel it on a, on a deep emotional level. Okay. My sense is the body is in, encapsulated with the information that we require to reclaim or restore our health? The question and the answer are both in the organ. Okay. So, you know, for me, whenever I look at people and I see the indicators, I already, it already gives me some information about what may be going on behind them. You know, and then we'll get into some more detail. Um, and sometimes, when I first present people with the information, they don't think it's true, or they don't think that it applies but then if you continue asking a, a few more questions, suddenly then more information comes forward that it's not as obvious. It's very easy to see what's going on with someone else. It's not as obvious to see what's going on with ourselves. You know, I call it you know, watching someone's television show. It's very easy for me to tune in on Friday night and watch Fred TV or Alan TV or Kelly TV and, and watch your life on TV and I can see all the dynamics. But then when I'm on the John Cordham show on the set and I'm not you know, I can't see nearly what I could see. You all can see it because you're watching the show. Um, and so that's why um, for people when it comes to healing, it's presenting them with information that may just not be easily observed. And if it's not easily observed, then we may have a tendency to deflect or, or discount it. Because we, I'm sure we all like to think that we've really got ourselves in check in terms of what's going on in our lives. But surprise. Mm -hmm. 